Let's take a look at another must be true question. Once again, starting with the question stem, which one of the following statements, meaning the answers, follows logically from the statements above, meaning the stimulus? So unlike the last question, where the phrasing was proper inference, here the phrasing is follows logically. Both phrasings in logical reasoning indicate must be true relationships. Stated differently, both phrasings are saying, if the statements in the stimulus are true, then the correct answer choice must also be true, must be true. This question is different. The stimulus contains a lot of conditional logic. The previous question gave us a causation chain. This question isn't concerned so much about the reasons why certain things happen but rather is just concerned about the sufficiency-necessity relationship between events. So to illustrate that, let's look just at the first sentence. If the price it pays for coffee beans continues to increase, the coffee shop will have to increase its prices. Now, it certainly is reasonable to ask, wait, 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 why must the coffee shop increase its prices? Is it because the price it pays for coffee beans goes up, or is it for some other reason? There you're probing the causal relationship. To be completely unambiguous, the claim could have said, if the price it pays for coffee beans continues to increase, that will result in the coffee shop having to increase its prices. There, we'd be looking at an unambiguous causal relationship. Here, the way it's stated, if this happens, comma, this will happen, could be a causal relationship, or it could be for some other reason. The point is simply that the sentence doesn't care so much. And so you don't need to care about that either. Rather, you just need to focus on the relationship that is being laid out, which is a if something, then something claim. In other words, it's a conditional logic claim. You have to draw the arrow. If the price that it pays increases, then the price that it charges will increase. Okay, so on this end of the arrow, the sufficient end of the arrow, is the if claim. The price it pays for coffee beans continues to go up. Then on this side, the coffee shop will have to increase the price it charges its customers. Let's keep going. The next claim says, in that case, referential phrasing. In what case? In this case. In the case where the price it charges its customers goes up. In that case, two things could happen. Either the coffee shop will begin selling non-coffee products or its coffee sales will decrease. We're not sure which one is going to trigger. Maybe both of them will trigger. But we know that at minimum, one of them will trigger. In that case, if it's the case that the price the coffee shop charges goes up, then either they'll start selling non-coffee products or coffee sales will decrease. At least one of these two things will take place. Maybe both. Who knows, right? But the or is telling us that at least one will happen if this happens. Okay, let's keep going. But selling non-coffee products will decrease the coffee shop's overall profitability. So if this thing happens, we know that at least one of these two will happen. If this thing happens, then what? Overall, profit will decrease, right? That's if this route is taken. And finally, we have one last claim. The coffee shop can avoid a decrease in overall profitability only if its coffee sales do not decrease. So far, we are able to chain everything up kind of nicely, right? And it kind of just proceeds in order as well. But with this last statement, I don't know. Can you do it? Can you chain it up? Somehow, can you fit it onto this? I mean, look, identify the elements, identify the logical indicator. It's only if, right? That's the logical indicator. What are the elements? Coffee sales do not decrease. Right here we have coffee sales decrease, so that's the opposite of coffee sales do not decrease. And the other idea is avoiding a decrease in overall profitability. Here we're precisely not avoiding, right? We're experiencing a decrease in overall profitability. So it seems like this is the opposite of this idea, this is the opposite of this idea, and they're connected by an only if. So maybe what can we do? How do we get rid of negations in conditional logic? Is there a way to come up with some sort of equivalent statement, but with negations or without negations, right? Hopefully this is ringing the contrapositive bell, right? Hopefully this is ringing the contrapositive bell. Here, I'll just do this stepwise. First, only if we said 
is whatever the thing follows it is a necessary condition. So if we draw an arrow over here, coffee sales do not decrease, right? Because coffee, coffee sales do not decrease, right? So not on the decrease, on the necessary condition, because it follows only if. Here, avoid a decrease in overall profitability. So overall profitability, again, avoiding the decrease, meaning not decreasing. That's uh, this claim, just kind of directly translated following the only if translation rule. Now apply the contrapositive, right? Applying the contrapositive, meaning flipping these two conditions around and slapping negations on them. Now, if conditions already have negations on them, slapping another negation cancels out the original one. So here, coffee sales decrease. I'm moving it from the necessary condition over to the sufficient, and I'm slapping a negation on it, which means canceling out the original negation, right? I have to do the same for this, right? So overall profit decrease. Once again, slapping negation on it, canceling it out, so it just looks like this. Well, if it looks like this, then I already have that, right? Coffee sales decrease is right over here. Overall profitability decreases right over here. Oh, all I need to do is just draw an arrow. See, being brand new to this logic, you're probably going to have to go through the step-by-step -step method of reaching the ultimate result. But once you become proficient in logic, you can just bypass all of that. As soon as you read this statement, I know it might be hard for you to believe me when I say this now, especially if you're brand new to this, to this but look, with practice, this is going to be true. As soon as you read the statement, you're going to do the contrapositive in your head, and you're just going to draw an arrow, and you're going to be done. You're going to realize that, hey, I just made a, the full logic map of what's going on here. I don't, I don't need to go through this tedious process. Okay, but how do you get from being a beginner to being someone who's proficient? Well, you have to go through the tedious process. No surprise there, I hope. Okay, so now that we have this map, and before we look at the answers, I want to test to see if you remember something we talked about from the previous lesson. If I tell you that the price that the coffee shop pays for its coffee beans does increase, right? In other words, I'm triggering this. This is no longer like, oh, if this happens, then this happens. If this happens, then... I'm telling you, no, 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 in reality, this is happening. Okay, this is happening. What else can you tell me? Well, you can tell me a lot of things. You can just follow the arrow through. You can tell me, one, that the price they charge is going to go up, which means, you know, they're going to have to do at least one of these two things. That I'm not sure which one, at least one, maybe both. But you can also tell me that, for sure, overall profitability will decrease, right? That's just following the, the arrows all the way through. That's like if I told you mittens is a cat, then you tell me, well, that mittens is a mammal, which means this or this, which means that she's a vertebrate. Okay, good, good. Here comes the trap. What if I tell you that the coffee shop experienced overall decrease in profitability? What then? The answer is nothing. You cannot say anything for sure other than repeating what I just said, namely that the coffee shop experienced overall decrease in profitability. Because why? Well, the arrow, that's right, points to nothing. Do you see, no, nothing in the statements here allow us to draw any conclusions on the basis of this idea. Hopefully you don't push against the arrow, right? I mean, these things are sufficient in this direction. This thing over here is not sufficient for any of these things. In fact, this is a necessary condition, right? So you don't push anything back this way. And if you try to push this way, you just realize, oh, wait, there's nothing to push to. So now look at both answer choices A and B. A says, if the coffee shop's overall profitability decreases, then the price it pays for coffee beans will have to continue to increase. B says, if the coffee shop's overall profitability decreases, either it will have to begun, either it will have begun selling non coffee products, or its coffee sales will have decreased. Are either one of these two answer choices the must be true correct answer? No. You see the trap, right? They're starting you on this condition with the if. And they're saying, if this is true, then something is true. See, then what? Then nothing. Then it pushes over to absolutely nothing. I'm not even going to, like, once you get really good at this, as soon as you spot this, you're going to move on. You're not even going to bother reading the rest of this. There's nothing they can say here that'll make this right. And the same with answer choice B. Once you spot this, you're going to save so much time. Just move on. Okay, look, analogously, this is exactly equivalent to if the original claim was something is a cat, meaning it's a mammal, meaning that it's got to be a vertebrate. I mean, you can make all sorts of claims. You can say, oh, if something is a cat, that's a vertebrate. Yeah, that must be true. You can say if something is not a vertebrate, then it's not a cat. That must be true. 
But you know what you can't say? You cannot say anything that takes the form if something is a vertebrate, then what? Then I don't care what you're gonna say. Every single statement of this form is not going to follow from these claims because the vertebrate is at the end of the chain, not at the beginning of the chain, right? Like answer choice A is equivalent to saying if something is a vertebrate, then it's a cat, right? Notice this this points all the way back over here. So that's like saying, oh, if something is a vertebrate, then arrow, then that means you're a cat. That's crazy. It just doesn't make any sense, right? Like none of the claims here allow me to draw that as a conclusion. So it's not right. B logically is exactly the same. B just says, oh, if something is a vertebrate, then you know, okay, we don't go all the way back over to a cat. We go to this intermediate thing. Okay, for the same reason that you couldn't go back over here, you can't go back over here because you just you don't put the arrow points this way, not that way. That's it. All right. So, sufficiency, necessity, confusion. This is one aspect of the trap. You're gonna see that kind of trap at the core of it. I call it the sufficiency, necessity, confusion. Right. That trap you're gonna see in many different ways. This is one way you'll experience the trap. If you don't recognize it. These answers are gonna, at minimum, take you time, take you a lot of time to get through, and at worst, you're gonna fall for them. But if you do recognize the traps, you can just clear cut your way through these garbage answers really, really fast. Now I want to look at answer choice D. The price it pays for coffee beans cannot decrease without the coffee shop's overall profitability also decreasing. Is this right? Is this answer choice a must-be-true answer choice on the basis of this? How do you answer that question? Well, the way I would answer that question is I would try to translate this without claim because intuitively I don't like without claims. It's just not that clear what you're saying. So I would translate this without. I remember just like unless it's group three, it's negate sufficient. I'm going to identify the logical indicator here without identify next the two ideas. Right, the two ideas being talked about: price pay for coffee beans cannot decrease. One idea. The other idea is coffee shops' overall profitability decreasing. That's the other idea. So the translation is: pick one idea, negate it, and make it the sufficient condition. Okay. So I see a not over here. So I'll just get rid of this one, right? Negate this one because the double, the two nots cancel out. Fine. Let's do it. The price it pays for coffee beans cannot decrease. Can decrease, right? Can decrease. So price paid, the price that it pays, can decrease. Arrow over to what? Arrow over to this this other idea. You don't do anything with. You just drop it, drop it down exactly the same, right? So that's oh, that's just the overall profit decrease idea, right? Overall profit decrease. Okay. Must this claim be true on the basis of these claims? Well, first I see that this idea is the same as this idea, which is great because this idea, a lot of things push over to this idea. But wait, this is not one of those ideas. The price that the coffee shop pays for its beans can decrease is not. Hopefully, you see, it's not this. It's not this. This is the price they charge their customers. It's not that, and it's not this either. This is the price they pay for the coffee beans. But this is talking about it increasing. Here, we're talking about it can decrease. So, okay, then I, I mean, you know, what can I do with this? Nothing. It's not a claim that must be true. It's a claim that. Could be true, I suppose, right? It could be that you know the price that it pays for coffee candy could be that it leads, or it could be that it doesn't lead to that. I have no idea, because none of the existing claims here help me decide whether this is true. So no. Now let's consider answer choice E. Either the price it pays for coffee beans will continue to increase, or the coffee shop's sales will increase. How do you handle a or claim? Either A or B. Once again, we're identifying the logical indicators and separating the logical indicators out from the ideas that they're connecting. Or follows the same translation rule as without, as unless. It's another group three indicator, which means negate sufficient. Okay, so pick out these two ideas, negate one of them, make it the sufficient condition. Now, the way this looks is like neither one already has negation, so it kind of doesn't matter. Just pick whatever. Right? I'll just pick this one. Coffee shop, coffee sales, not. Increase, right? That doesn't necessarily mean decrease. By the way, it could just mean stagnant, flat. So I have to represent it as coffee sales not increase. I don't want to write decrease because again, negating this doesn't necessarily mean decrease. It just means not increase, which could be flat, could be decrease, right? So negate sufficient. I negated this idea, made it the sufficient. The other idea stays the same, and it just drops into place in the necessary 
price pays for coffee beans will continue to increase. So the price, this, this is, we're talking about the price they pay, right? Not the price they charge their customers. This is the price they pay will continue to increase. Okay, well, hopefully you can see that this is just all sorts of wrong. Right. First of all, where is this idea? It's not on here. Is it this? This is a this is a related but different idea. Right. Second of all, look at how answer choice E is situating this idea: the price it pays for coffee beans continue to increase. It's situating it as a necessary idea, saying something points to it. Okay. Let's look back at our stimulus. Right. Here's the idea: is it the case that something points to it? No, it's not. Maybe something points to it. If something does point to it, I don't know what the thing is. Once again, not. The right answer choice. Finally, we arrive at the correct answer choice C, and I want to point out a couple of things with this answer choice. First of all, notice that it's actually just a simple if-then formulation, but they played this grammatical trick where you know I'll tell you if something is a cat, then it's a mammal, right? If something is a cat, then it's a mammal. That's just straightforward reading of it. I can say the same thing, but shove the if in the middle. Something is a mammal if it's a cat, right? Something is a mammal if it's a cat. Well, that's the same thing as saying if something is a cat, then it's a mammal. The placement of the if at the beginning of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence doesn't change the logical structure of the claim. If the price it pays for coffee beans continues to increase, then the overall profitability will decrease. Price, pay, increase. That's the sufficient condition. If, right? Just like how here it was. If, then what? Then. Overall profitability will decrease. Perfect. A arrow B arrow C arrow D. Therefore, A arrow D. This claim must be true. Analogously, it's like if I said, if something is a cat, then it's a mammal. If something is a mammal, then it must be a vertebrate. Well, the must be true claim is that if something is a cat, then it's a vertebrate. So, one last thing I want to say about this question. Especially in relation to the other must be true question we did, you see that it's different. You just feel that it's different, right? Because this is a conditional logic question. What matters here isn't the causes of things and the effects of things. It doesn't matter why their profit is going to decrease. I mean, it matters, I guess, if you're running the coffee shop and you care about your business's profitability. You want to figure that stuff out. Yeah, you, you, like we're not engaged at that level, right? We're just dealing. At this formal level, in other words, we could have swapped out every single one of these ideas with abstract concepts. I could have said, if square, then triangle; if triangle, either circle or star; and if circle, then pentagon; and if star, then pentagon. And nothing would have. I mean, this answer choice would have just. Like, oh yeah, you know what? If、uh, square, then pentagon. Still the right answer choice. Swap in anything you want for circle. Circle now stands for bears. Stars now stand for deer.、Right? Square stands for going to the grocery store. If I go to the grocery store, then I will buy milk. If I buy milk, I'm either going to make custard or a latte. If I make custard, I'm going to be happy. If I make latte, I'm going to be happy. C is still the correct answer choice. If I go to the store, I'm going to be happy. That's the sense in which this is incredibly formal. Now I hesitate a little bit to say what I just said because you know this is. An introduction for some of you to this, and what am I doing here? I'm taking you from the beginning all the way to the end. But given that this is a limited course in logical reasoning, a mini course in logical reasoning, I just want to give you a preview of ultimately what you're trying to do with these questions. Your ability to see this question as not really a question about coffee bean prices and selling non-coffee products, rather as truly a question about forms. And ideas and their sufficiency necessity relationships. That is what's going to determine, in the end, your ability to do these questions fast and accurately. It's something to work towards.